Good evening. Welcome to the Billy Jones Show, a sports and fantasy sports show. It's Tuesday, Tuesday, March 19th, and I am your host, Billy Jones. Tonight, we're back drafting MLB baseball on underdog. Um, as you might, some of you might know, recently I joined the Spike Week team to do a bit of research and writing, so I thought it'd be fun to get one of my Spike Week collaborators, um, fellow collaborators, on here tonight. Bernie Kurt is in the building, and it should be another fun draft. Let's get going. What's up? How are you doing, Bernie? I am freaking excited to be here, Billy. I got my best ball brunch cup. I have a hot tea and I'm ready to bring the hot takes. I love that. You got a brunch cup for dinner, <laughs> post-dinner drinks. I love that. Um, and I love the hot takes, um, even if, if they are, they don't have to be founded in data as long as they're hot, right? <laughs> we'll bring them. Um, yeah, we we'll... will maybe talk about like people's appearances and like who's the best looking MLB player today other mm -hmm. hard-hitting data points awesome yeah well yeah thank you so much for joining today um as i said you and i are now working together at spike week which i'm really excited about um getting to work with like-minded individuals that are all kind of focused on the same thing is really cool um so yeah i'm really excited to have you on but we're gonna go ahead and jump over to the dinger um jump right into a draft no no reason to wait not at all dinger is looking pretty interesting we got like nine days to go and 12 percent or excuse me like 17 percent it's gonna yeah so are you, is, in your, are you is that saying it's like filling pretty quickly or are you saying there's a fair amount left uh, i think there's a fair amount left for only like nine days to go yeah that is a good point i think that it's filling like about two percent ish a day i would have to, i haven't been following it but yeah. I think I did look at quickly last year's tournament and there was like a heavy last couple of days. If that's people overlay chasing, if that's people intentionally doing it, I don't know. Um, I know that I'm getting to 60 and I have another 10 left and this is my last start, my last 10. So I did want to kind of wait. It is, it does make some sense if getting through the in injuries, especially pitcher injuries, the mm -hmm. shoving in a bunch lake is some, there's some value there. Absolutely. What's up, Woo Woo J Train? Um, great stream last night by him. He had Nez on. That was that was awesome. Okay, we're waiting on eight. We may have to fill some time. So, um, start off with some hot takes. So, what are some hot takes that you've had, or just takes in general you've had this drafting season that you kind of leaned into? So I went a bit heavy on Dodgers. That is kind of one of my takes. I enjoyed the price on James Outman. I enjoyed the price on Will Smith. And I really like Teoscar. Now, Teoscar was a little bit lower earlier in the draft cycle. So like if I started Mookie or Otani, I was hitting two or three or four of those guys on every team. Hmm. Yeah, the Dodgers. And I know that's like, not like super hot, like everybody wants them, but like I was fine, like doing a really nice stack of them. Yeah, no, it is it is noteworthy because the it's really easy to be like I'm gonna stack the Astros, and because you can get their best three players in the first mm -hmm. five rounds and be like comfortable with that. The Dodgers, you kind of do have to be like I'm taking a stud and then some secondary pieces with it, so it doesn't to me feel as like comfy but you are leaning into the best team in the league or one of the best teams in the league. So uh, very, very logical. Um, love this. Uh, good evening, roofing man, 17 more to max. Um, my version of max is 60 because I wanted to get enough volume in there, but I didn't want to do the, I don't know, you got only so many bullets. And so I'm doing only 60. Um, okay. Yeah. So I, I set out to do 25. 
and I unfortunately <laughs> fell drastically short. Okay. Um, so I can't uh, register for drafts where I live. So mm-hmm. I went to Florida uh, about a month ago or so. And I was like, oh, I'm going to get a whole bunch of fasten. And then the times that my wife was sleeping that I could do fast drafts, they were just like really slow to fill. So I had to uh, do a couple fasts and then just register some slows on my way out of state. It's kind of disappointing. Okay. Yeah, it's disappointing. Um, it's, it's, it is what it is. Um, so for this draft, we did get the 11 slot. This is, we'll see what happens here. It's kind of in the, like, that's like the dead zone. Um, this actually, fortunately, have not gotten a 12 pick yet. So I am, this is oh, number really? 51. <laughs> Random member generator kind of likes me right now. Um, yeah. But we do so see what, some friends. Go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, um, I was just going to ask you your general tactic from the 11. If you're going uh, double brave, but we can also look at friends first. I was just going to say that, yeah, we got, do have some friends. Roofing man's in the chat already. Grill Belichick's here. Got Josh Jenkins here. Woo, J Train. Seen paid around. So um, this is pretty cool. But what are my tactics from this? One, hope that I'll, I get an outfielder. <laughs> and then two, um, that is a great question. I do feel like, I don't know. I'm, if there's going to be time to, to Strider, now is time to Strider because we've gone through most of the injury risk through like the beginning of the season. You're getting full like confidence in him. Mm-hmm. Um, done that early in the drafting window. Um, but now that we're like, he's not really going to touch the ball until he starts in the real game at this point or – maybe a small tune up. So um really comfortable with him. What are your thoughts on that? I I it could be interesting. I don't know if I have any strider yet. Who's the second pitcher off the board now with the Cole injury? Corbin Burns and it's like okay. well into the set third round at this point. And this I I'm gonna say this I do, I don't have a single strider at this point. It's just now that we're talking this through and I'm put in this position I could see it. Yeah. I I think it could be fun to do it because I also think that you and I, the way we think about this game, would build a team different than a lot of Strider folks. Yeah, let's let's roll Strider. This is gonna be a, a first time me doing this. <laughs> but I think that what we are you're referring to and we'll talk to after this pick is how we're gonna build out a pitching room. Um Okay, cool. So for me, this is Matt Olson. Um, yeah. What are your thoughts? Yeah, let's do it. Okay, cool. So um, what you're what you were referring to just a moment ago was like the how we're going to build this team is a little different than most Strider teams, and I think what we're going to do is now punt this thing for a while <laughs> and then come back to it with a bit, bit of volume in the end um, because of some of the research I've done previously showing how like overextending a pitcher is pretty disastrous at times yeah yeah so what we could kind of just generally count on here is atlanta is a team that has 13 games in all three playoff weeks Mm. they're one of the only teams that has 13 and we can just basically go hey strider's getting two starts in the final week or three starts in the final two weeks. And basically that is who we're going to bank on. If we get to the finals, that's who's going to separate us. But how we get to the finals is going to be a little bit different than maybe other folks. Yeah, for sure. And if if there is a world where Strider gets three starts in the fi- in the playoffs, then that is, it's over. <laughs> like, it's over. He's, he is going to be the guy that you need. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up on my other screen uh, one of the Spike Week tools just so we can kind of see what's going on. Okay. And I'm looking with Strider. Oh, you're doing the um, opponent IQ? Yeah, I'm going to do the opponent IQ, look at opponent combos. So with Strider, we'll have some ability to maybe – just think about the game a little bit different than everybody else. 
Okay. Go on with that. Yeah. Yeah. So what the opponent IQ tool does is it does look at uh, the drafts that you've been in and it basically will say, Hey, what are those player combinations? And it's just getting pulled up here right now. So give me one second. Okay, there we go. So Strider and Matt Olson in the drafts I've been in, which is pretty limited, but is 29% owned. Okay, so that's like a very common pairing. It's it's pretty common. There are some folks that are higher, but it makes me think when we get to the 3-4 turn here, how do we get a little bit different than those folks that line up with that 35 ADP or mm -hmm. that 38 ADP, especially if those are two players that have sat in like the same spot, the whole drafting cycle and which you'll know better than me because most of my yeah. volumes come in on other sites right now. That is a really good point because there's two things I want to break down there. The, well, the yeah, when and how to get unique, right? Um, knowing that which which kind of sets are going to be chalky and that occurs when players sit in the same drafting spot the entire time and they like there is logic to put them together um i think my favorite example is when i talk football is t higgins and jamar chase sat at the front of the first round in the two three turn the entire time yep. and there is incentive to stack them up so that pairing just became just so common throughout the entire tournament. Um, yeah, but we we're actually seeing some interesting things. So we're now through round two um, and we're already seeing Gossman off the board at the at number 25, which is particularly early saying he's had some injury risk so far. Um, that is unique for sure. But everything else is kind of normal for the most part. Um, this is kind of the new meta of pushing pitcher. Last year we would have seen a half dozen to a dozen or so pitchers in the first four rounds, and this year we're not seeing that at all. It, this is so interesting to me because the other two sites I've been doing my fast on lately are so different than this. So seeing like okay. Albies go all the way back to pick 30, he rarely gets past pick 26 and there goes Ellie day de la Cruz. Who's a second rounder. So, okay. Michael Harris was kind of somebody I would had it in my mind. I was hoping for. Yeah, for sure. Um, so for me, this pick comes down to. I like Nolan Jones because of upside. Um, and I need an outfielder. So I think yeah. that that's where I kind of would like to go. Yeah, we definitely need one, maybe two outfielders here. Yeah, and okay, we'll see what happens here. Um, okay, great. So I was actually hoping to get Reynolds. One of my recent things that we've been talking about in Discord is like the, the Pirates. And while I don't think that Reynolds is a particularly great pick, I don't think he's a bad pick. And, and in a way that I think he's like correctly priced, like – little boosted because of scarcity like he's not a superstar so he's like kind of sitting where he should, should sit so i'm not like particularly in on him but i am in on O'Neill Peruse. i am in on key brian hayes so downstream i really like to kind of stack it up with him and that's the kind of drafting that i like to do is not like oh what am i going to do in this pick but it's how am i going to set up this whole team for success and that's what it sounds like you're doing knowing that hey i'm going to have some stacking partners at infield there's even uh the outfielder Jax winsky that we could pick up along the way and we're going to mm -hmm. need some volume at outfielder later like it's a good team to start your investment with yeah because there's a lot of like openings later that you can get to um, I completely agree. And then Colorado, there's a couple late plays that we like to that and we love. We just like Colorado. <laughs> it's fun to hit there. I would love to hit there sometime. Take a metal bat. That'd be fun. <laughs> well, the nice thing about Colorado is they get Baltimore and Miami in the finals. Mm -hmm. Now, Baltimore does have Burns now. They have great. Grayson a little bit, but I, I don't know if that 
definitely scares me off. And I don't think Miami scares me off at all. From Miami cannot keep Rockies. a pitcher healthy right now. <laughs> like everyone is dying for Miami. Okay, so uh, through four rounds, just a quick recap. Spent we started from the eleven hole. Went Spencer Strider. Something I have not done yet so far, but um, we'll see how we build it. Did Matt Olson a pair, so we now have elite separators at the top. Came back with Nolan Jones and Brian Reynolds. Nolan Jones, high upside play. Brian Reynolds, just that high quality oatmeal. Um, just going to fill up some stats. Not going to do it in a sexy fashion, but um, yeah. So, so in very my interesting under, stuff. Go ahead. In my underdog drafts, Strider, Olsen, and Nolan Jones is a combination none of my opponents have so far. Which yeah, is a ton of drafts, but it's noteworthy enough. It is. And the, the Nolan Jones thing is interesting because I played in the bullpen too. Um, and the the bullpen was the the warm, like the way too early. That's how I got prepared for this. I ripped 30 of them. I got like I figured out how kind of people lasted. And Nolan Jones started out where we saw Wyatt Langford, and then he screamed up maybe not as deep as Langford. But he screamed up the board and he sat somewhere between 49 and 60, like this fifth round, and then sometimes would jump into the fourth round. But once this tournament opened, he went from like 50 to 40 and then to the 30s. So a player that's been moving like that, you can even be comfortable like that the the pairings are going to be less because he's in now the third and you're pairing him with a fourth when the, you were pairing a fourth with a third. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. So we see a big run on pitchers here, not abnormal, but every, it looks like about half the teams are going. But most of the folks that are watching the stream with us, most of them are avoiding pitchers so far. Yeah, and it is it's like you have like two I, I kind of like if I have if I'm gonna jump in a stream to draft with people that I know that like like to draft the way that I like to draft punt pitchers gonna have some extra stacking like i definitely like plan that into my build whereas you know, like the if i know that pitching is going to go down the board i'm going to try to push pitching even more so i can get some more value um versus when i'm sitting in a in draft room at 11 30 at night trying to find some people to fall asleep while i'm drafting against them <laughs> then i'm like gonna maybe push a little, a little bit earlier with um, some of these pitchers because i think if we just go earlier so Knowing your room is definitely important. Yeah. Like what Josh Jenkins is doing with three Astros. Don't see that a ton out there. There's just not that level of stacking in a lot of the rooms I see across sites. Oh, this is like one of my favorite builds to do it this way. Really clean top of the lineup. Um, great ballpark to hit in. It's like, it's a righty. You can just yank home runs there. So. And you are on such a stud. So I think that this is a lot of fun. I was really hoping that Jordan fake injury news was going to get us like a day to day tag or an out tag or something, but that's not the yeah. case. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so now we're back on the clock. Do we want to stack up the Braves? Do you um, want to? So ahead, I you know. like uh, Ozuna and Castellanos here. So if okay. you want to make sure to lock in the stack, I think that's fair to start with. And then we can kind of see where we go from there. Okay. I have not been on Castellanos and I'm not, I don't know. feels like, uh, and he's gone there, but it feels like we're paying for the accumulation. And I just, okay. I also think I just like hate watching him swing. I hate his swing. So I don't want to root for him. <laughs> I've never seen him swing. So there we're in a good we're in good company. Uh um, let's, let's take an infield bat. Okay. I'm pretty open to whatever here. Okay, so let's go Royce Lewis. Um high upside. Um I think that there is like if there's a guy who could um move up pretty significantly it's him we've had injury concerns in the past we love those type of players that seem to be depressed because of not being able to get on the field um so i think that that's 
that's nice. And I would rather take bigger swings at infield because there is so much depth in infield, whereas outfield, there is just – it falls off such a cliff um, that I want some more solidity there. And I – I think we'll have no problem finding infielders all throughout this draft. So if we do take some big, like a big swing on a, maybe a riskier guy here, like we'll have enough depth that won't matter if he doesn't pan out perfectly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. What does this mean? I'm not sure I know what this means. Uh, Nick, you're going to have to explain yourself, buddy. <laughs> yeah. What, who, who, what, what, what nation? Um. <laughs> oh. Uh Okay, so this is, I like the I like the turns for these drafts, like these streams, because it gives us opportunity just to kind of like actually chat through stuff, um, such as Wyatt Langford has been going up the board, and I think it's fair. He's been unbelievable. He's like probably the one the best hitting prospect in the game right now, um, and but it's just so such a weird dynamic where his manager refuses to say that he is like the guy right now. And I'm just like declare him as on the opening day roster. Um, just do it. He's been amazing. But um, yeah, we've seen him go from like undrafted to all the way up here. And there's some friends of the show that have like 50% bags of Wyatt Langford, which I'm like, Oh, I, I, that's kind of wild. I definitely am one of the people that don't get nervous over exposing themselves to certain players. If a mm -hmm. player fits what I'm looking for, whether it's MLB or NFL, like 50% maybe, but I ended up with in NFL last year, three guys over 30%. Like it, if I have a conviction and those people are fitting my builds and they make sense for what I'm trying to do, I really do not care what the number is to be completely honest. So like 40% here, 50%, like if you have a good reason to do it and you're okay losing that money, because guess what? Most of the people drafting these teams are going to lose money. Just do it. Like, the people that are scared to go over 12% on any player, it just drives me bonkers. Yeah, for sure. I have some like pretty heavy exposures, but I like I like I think of them kind of warped because for me this is my first strider because I've been heavily out on early pitching, so therefore all my early hitting is going to be increased. So I kind of just like take that with a grain of salt. But um, the thing with Langford is that you could have gotten if if this forty percent is largely cheaper then it comes with little to no risk um, of like hitting it wrong because the expectation of the points out of those draft picks are low. If it's being done 40% in sixth round or even third round 40%, like then there's like, okay, the, the, the risk quantification needs to be much tighter, um, I think. But, and I, that's where I would be nervous. But um, everyone's risk tolerance is different, and I think that's what's brilliant about this game. Okay, so we got a further explanation from Nick in the chat line. Apparently, hits home runs at really bad times. So is that it's like should we just start apologizing every time that we need to hit a home run? <laughs> oh, that's fun. <laughs> um, okay, so I got a quick question for you. So now that we are round seven or going into round seven, but we do have an early strider, when would you turn our attention back to pitching? At this stage, only when there is one of my core players or target players that is dropping. So here we have a core player for both of us in Reagan's. Mm -hmm. Nothing else at the other positions is greatly standing out. I don't mind torque, but we don't really have a super high reason for torque. There's also Max Freed up at the top that if we wanted to try to get a double ATL pitcher to try to maybe give ourselves some extra shots at um, more starts in the finals, like that's not a terrible thing, but I'm totally cool with Reagan's here. Uh, I was kind of on him and then you talked to me about him and I got more on him. So I'm just taking lots of him. Yeah. I was on him early. The, um, 
was it's like he had great finishing stats last year. He's also tread athletics guy, which I like that they're like very forward leaning in terms of the way that they teach pitching and um, and all of that. So like I really think that they I'm that's something I'm, I'm keen on. Um, what are your thoughts on this space? Do we want to go rookie? Do you want to go younger guy? What are your thoughts? Um, I either or is fine with me. So this is purely a coin flip. I probably have more Jackson Churio just because he is the brand new rookie could be just absolutely amazing. We've seen Riley green have some seasons that aren't amazing, Mm -hmm. but like he could be really good. I guess I'm just more leaning into the uncertainty than not. If that makes sense. It makes complete sense. And the way that we built this, we did not take an outfielder at off the top. So we have taken two big swings. Nolan Jones, big swing. Jackson Churio, big swing. And so therefore, if we can get one of those to hit, or if we get both of them to hit, then they're gonna we're gonna be now getting players that could be in that same position. We could be drafting multiple first rounders on this team for next year's um team. Yeah. And that's the way that I really try to structure my builds is if I'm going a little contrarian, which we did, how can I take advantage of that? And it's not by drafting the basic uh, oatmeal type players. Yeah, It's like, hey, how do we get a little bit spicy on this team and do something that maybe Strider pick drafters wouldn't do? Yeah. Talking about, so this is the point where we can kind of really see what people have done. And talking about a spicy team, this 12-hole team is is spicy. There's not, no, no pitchers, so I love that. But also, he's really kind of avoided the outfielder position, too. So we'll see how he, he or she wraps it up, because that's like a, I would not be getting myself into the 0-6-2 build. I have not done that yet. Yeah, that looks like a rake team to me, to be completely honest. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> maybe they can salvage it and they just know the perfect outfielders. And maybe they have like James Outman up their sleeve and some other stuff, but uh, who knows <laughs> what they are thinking. Yeah, and it's like I, I go through phases where it's like, especially in this tournament. So now in like the final stretch, I think the first 40 were like very much like I'm going to be meticulous. And then... 40 through 50 was like, I'm going to get a little weird. I'm going to still do the stuff that I like to do, but I'm going to get a little off brand a little bit or get throw people around the board. Um, I was having fun just onslaughting the Mets. Well, not onslaughting, but like moving Alonzo across the board. And then so it's easier to line up Lindor and Nimmo, um, stuff like that. Which we had an opportunity for those two in this one and we skipped it. I almost um, pitched Lindor and Nemo. Did yeah, we could have done that. And that would have been interesting because I've only done that through I think I've probably only done that through Alonso mm-hmm. getting Lindor and Nemo, but that I don't know why that's right. There's definitely a world where Alonso isn't, well, isn't a necessary piece. You'd be swapping it out for Olsen, basically. Yeah, in a, in a final situation, I would like that swap. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And there's, there's, that's one of the things that people get so in their head about of like, oh, you got to draft this way to win one of these tournaments. None of us have the final answer for what this one slate is going to look like in the end in September, right? Mm-hmm. Like, there's so many different variations of how you could draft a team or how you could build a team that has tournament winning upside. And I mean, our goal is to just draft a tournament winning upside team. There's going to be a thousand things that could change whether we're live or not live, whether we get out of this room or not. The problem is, is you don't want to be pay D in the 12 hole and not have a tournament winning upside team. That's yeah, the that, bad. But, that's exactly it. You don't want to disqualify yourself yes. in the in the draft. <laughs> um, and Again, I I give I'll give them credit. We'll see what happens here, but um, skeptical. <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, so we got a so, two, uh, two, four. This is pretty fair. Um, I think. What are your thoughts on playing um, Chicago? Uh, just trying to get both of them. Yeah. Yo, let's do it. Cool. So, um, because I would imagine Payde's not going infield. They're here. Yeah, and that was easy. And it's one knowing the knowing the turn. Um, and then just we had to move a little bit down the board. We scrolled the F down a little bit um, and got our guy. <laughs> um, but the no, this is this is something I, I don't mind. Um, and I actually got to play against Danzy Swanson in high school. Um, so that's a fun little story. Oh, yeah. Was yeah. he probably really good? He was. So, but he was younger, and there was another major leaguer on his team who was like a senior at that time. I think Danzy was a freshman or sophomore. And so he looked good, but the comparable player looked like different level because he was three years older yeah. um and so i just i there's probably some bias in my mind against dansby swanson because i saw him when he was younger than me but um it's just kind of cool to think back that i was on the same field as some of these major leaguers absolutely mm -hmm. where my brain's going at for our draft right now is how do we finish off at least getting some of these guys stacked like uh brian reynolds we got Cruz taken from us pretty early we mm -hmm. don't have anything with Churio yet. Nolan Jones, we can always tag later. But any guys that are like in this upcoming range, even if they're a little bit past that we might want to pull up to try to finish one of these out? It's a good question. So Atlanta, we'll just go down the board. We have some time. Atlanta, like I'm probably done with Atlanta. Um, we got two big power hitters. Kelnick doesn't seem to be able to hit anything right now and they brought in Duvall that's not good news um so not probably not going there Minnesota um that's very much in play Carlos Correa seems like a good value Max Kepler seems like a late value Edward Julian seems like a late value Walner hits the ball to the moon so we like that um Julian popped in some of my initial research for the season yeah he's I, I think he's really taking them but he definitely is a uh guy that could be a riser after this season yeah i think that he's supposed to um lead off for them so i'm going to this is mlb playing time.com i love it uh, i think that, that mike Curlin does great work but he's supposedly gonna lead off here and then he might be a part of a like left hand platoon, but we don't mind platoons if they can run into a bunch of righties. Um, and he's gonna lead off, so we like that. What then about pirates? Pittsburgh? Yeah, we like the pirates. Sawinski, so ton of fun. Uh, Brian Hayes, a ton of fun. Henry Davis, a ton of fun. Yeah, and then Milwaukee Brewers. If Reese Hoskins is still on the board, I really liked him. Um, Thomas isn't a bad pick. Yeah, uh, Contreras has moved up. Go ahead. The stream that I did with Sheep a few weeks back, he was big into Willie Adames. At least like in that. our build, because he could go in a little bit later on the other sites. Oh yeah, the the other one that I can't play on. Okay, but so we're up in a couple picks. After this turn, we'll review the team and just give a quick update on that. Um, yeah. Moving along pretty well, um, though. So none of these pitchers are jumping out at me as like guys that I think we should take a detour for. Not, not a single one of these names. Maybe yeah, Shota only, if we had to, but ugh. yeah, I actually have like aggressively exposed to Shota Imanaga, so I'm, pro I'm trying to wind that back a little bit. <laughs> um, but I, I don't ag mind aggressively exposing myself, Billy. Oh, okay, <laughs> just not on stream. <laughs> okay, I'll keep I'll, I'll keep it together. 
Um, okay, so we're going to start off with Sawinski, um, continue to build out the, the bats here, stack yep. it up a little bit. Um, it kind of fits everything that we like to do. Oh, and then this, not our cue, but the player pool on the left is so gross right now. Can we get some uh, outfielder, infielder, see what that looks like? Yeah, of course. How do you feel about Josh Naylor? Josh Naylor is a player I do think is good at baseball. And we like that. It's better than being bad at baseball. Yeah. Um, and that'll be fine not stacking that, but I'm just trying to kind of build out this a set of bats that can hit, match some of the teams that have less pitching investment than us. Um, Absolutely. Yeah, but so, okay, to recap the team um, through 12 rounds, we have two pitchers, five infielders, five outfielders. Um, our pitching is Spencer Strider and Cole Reagans, two absolute studs that when they start should be pretty awesome, putting up fair, high, pretty high stats in this, in this format. Um, then from an infield outfield perspective, Matt Olson, uh, Royce Lewis, Dansby Swanson, Nico Horner, Josh Naylor, um, outfield, Nolan Jones, Brian Reynolds, uh, Marcelo Zuna, Jackson Churio, and, and Jack Sawinski. This name's a lot of fun. Um, maybe I should not draft it outfield early because <laughs> this, this well, is, it's landing. I'm going to let the chat know our little secret. So if Billy makes the finals with this team, he's going to buy me a three topping pizza as my reward. I I'm said that I'd buy you as many team. toppings as you wanted. Yeah. <laughs> I, it, but more than three toppings, that just seems too much. Like, what what three toppings would you not go that with? Sophisticated. Oh my goodness. If you let me get a three topping pizza, that would be the most bare bones boring thing ever. It would be pepperoni, mushroom, and green pepper, probably. It's not so bad. No, it's just kind of basic. Like it's not fancy or anything. Yeah, that is true. I was expecting this to be like a somewhat extravagant if it's a finals pizza. Can I get some uh, some flavored crust or something? Oh, absolutely. You can get you some stuffed crust if you want it. Um, I think it's not even like a bad like payment, right? It's super. It's contingent only, and it, if it's if it's a winner, um, so like there's really no downside here. Mm -hmm. um, maybe I should start charging a pizza. I think it's a good plan. I feed yourself in the future. So roofing man is taking a lot of the guys I target. And um, I'm just going to count that as, Hey, good for me and roofing man. Like the mm -hmm. last, um, I take a lot of Adley. I take a lot of James Outman. I take a lot of Pavetta. I take a lot of Ward, a lot of Hunter Brown, like a lot of this last tier grouping that roofing man has is like guys that I really enjoy on my teams. Yeah, I like Hunter Brown. He is, I think some of his statistics last year were deflated from being pitching more, just more volume than he'd ever done in the past. Um, and, but he has been like built up to, to handle more innings. So I like that. Nick Pavetta started off as someone I was really, really interested in. I got some nervousness around him because um, I got to look at like the, how much his stats were impacted by the time he wasn't actually starting games. Um, and so like, I do, I feel like there was a, like, he used to be a good pick, but I'm not as convinced he's a good pick anymore. And um, so I think that he's like, I like the term cromulent and like, he's fine. <laughs> um, but he, uh, he was used to be a target for me and I kind of like got scared off a little bit. um so we're so, up go ahead where do you think we end up with roster construction wise here um seven pitching potentially prop seven pitching um and then six seven or seven six okay. um what are your thoughts on going to pitching here 
and getting Tanner by you. Yeah, that works. Okay. Um, some value there, 17 pick value, as well as um, I like what Cleveland does with pitching. Mm -hmm. um, do you want to stack up Cleveland bats? Yes, this person or CES would probably be it for me. Let's do the – say his name. Andres. The last one. Jimenez? Let's go. There we go. Is that right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's close yeah, enough. baby. <laughs> I love the – let's go with this person. <laughs> <laughs> we are releasing a Spike Week roundtable that Billy, myself, and Eric recorded earlier today. And I did get myself in a name pretzel. I tried to like show off and then I got like two names into like a four name rant and I definitely botched a few of them. It was embarrassing. But you're having fun and that's what counts. <laughs> like whether or not I can pronounce their names does not matter to how many points they're going to contribute to my fantasy baseball team. It, it it absolutely does not. It just makes the, the streaming a little more actually entertaining, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> um, so oh, I, I think we easily could be done at infielder here now. Like that's a pretty solid crew. It's a very solid crew. And this then when, so that is going to land us at a seven, six, seven. Um, yeah. Or eight, no, eight. I like to get to eight, but I don't feel like Strider and a Reagan's no. is an eight. I don't think we can get to eight with how risky we played outfield. Mm -hmm. uh, even though we do have early picks, we played it pretty risky. And I, with this build, I think we need seven there. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, but we're moving right along. Um, it's interesting to see how some how the board breaks, like. Brian Wu, all the way up here, I understand that he's been great. Um, but he's been just absolutely – I've never – I don't understand this, like, why him and Bryce Miller aren't, like, attached at the hip, whereas, like, Wu seems to be continuing to creep up, but Miller doesn't. I don't I don't get it. Um, but maybe some people do. And I, I know girls in the, the chat, I think I'll probably – See what why what's that about? Maybe he's going to double tap Seattle. I don't know. And like it could just purely be at this stage. Like has a whole bunch of position players and needs to move somebody up to be able to get the rest of the players they want to. Like when we're getting in this stage, I have no problem moving people ten picks here, fifteen there. Like it's not that exact of a science. It really isn't, and it doesn't matter if. If he's the right pick, if he goes here versus here, he's still going to be a driver of your success. Um, yeah. yeah. I just think it's interesting because if you think about the profile that is Wu, I don't think he's been built up from an innings perspective that, the same way that Bryce Miller has. Um, but he's he has great. a cooler name. He does. I mean, Bryce isn't bad, but Miller kind of standard. Yeah, and you're talking to Billy Jones here, so... We gotta we appreciate some uh, name uniqueness. There's Bryce Miller. Um, maybe they're both just moving up. Those so you want Jared Clinic if he gets back to us? Is that enough of a fall for you? Um, just I just haven't been clicking him at all. Um, but I guess it could. What are your well, thoughts on why? Because he's looked horrible so far. Well, I, I don't super put a ton of care into what they look like over the sample size of spring training. Fair. The other is, is there a reason why he can't dust Duval over the year? No. I mean, that's very reasonable. He's the, do we know what Duval is? And Kalanick, I feel like there is growth in there still. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah. So it's like one of those guys where, he, like, if he's going to be in our player pool, at what point are you going to consider him? Or is he just not in the player pool? And like, 
so at this stage, like we could have went Rooker over the him, but he just went. But we still mm -hmm. need outfielders. We need pitchers. These pitchers kind of suck unless we go to PFAT. <laughs> PFAT. <laughs> oh, that's great. Um, so we're up into. I guess we can get Kelnick, right? I think part of the reason uh, that I like to do this is because that gets get people bring different opinions, and that's going to get me on someone who I'm not drafting at a good value. So yeah, I guess Andrew that's Jackson the up. pitch is we're getting him at maybe the best value in the tournament because they brought in an old guy back for his third time with the team. Yeah. He fits our stacks. It's not like we're grabbing them out of stack. Three, six, six. Go back. Kikuchi, maybe? Yeah. Or do you want to go deeper down the board and get like a Cutter Crawford? Uh, I'd go Kikuchi. Okay. Uh, because one Cutter Crawford can still be there for us. Probably not with this crew watching us stream. Yeah. Me just but, calling out my pick. <laughs> yes, exactly. But um, like one of the nice things about Kikuchi is he is going to get the volume of innings. I don't mm -hmm. have any reservations in that. He's just not going to get work if he's healthy. Yeah, for sure. And that's all it takes with these guys. He's late is enough to pitch the 150 to 180 innings get those two start weeks um maybe run it out there a couple times where you get seven plus but um the the ask out of guys this late is not a ton especially when we strider and reagan's are their anchors completely mm -hmm. agree so okay like here's a guy more. i want to yeah. ask you about if you Go don't ahead. mind, sorry to talk over you. Uh, JD Martinez, unsigned, theoretically talking to a few teams. It's getting pretty late, man. Is this normal for baseball players to wait to this late? Or is this like Will Fuller vibes? Um, it's not this. It's like not un. It's not abnormal to wait. I feel like JD Martinez as a as a hitter has a lot more leeway than a pitcher does because the, he doesn't really have a ramp up time. Like he doesn't have to like go out there and like get his arm going for four weeks or whatever it is. Um, but it does seemingly it's getting late. Like, as you said, it's getting really late. Like we're a week and a half away from the season starting. If he's not on a team now, I don't know where he's going to land. There isn't seemingly like an obvious, like perfect fit for him. And if he does go somewhere, do we want him as like in a split role? Probably not. So, um, but from a talent perspective, he's awesome. So I see it, but yeah, I, I don't know. In best ball where it's like a points accumulation, um, he almost feels unclickable. Okay. But then I could see the point where I completely missed that. And he's a stud, he does what he's always done. He just gets he gets the requisite five hundred and fifty bats that we at bats that we need. I don't know. I don't have I don't have a strong take on it. A roofing man saw your cutter Crawford and said he's mine. Yeah, he's here. It's like I gotta learn that. <laughs> when I first started doing these, I had like two people watching me. And I'm like, yeah, I'm at, I got no risk. I can literally say whatever I want <laughs> and then call it out. Now fifteen, maybe okay. Cool. Now I can't imagine what like some of the bigger streamers have to deal with. Um, I see you got to throw out a fake hard. in the queue every once in a while. Yeah, for sure. You got you got to fake, and um, it. But this whole streaming thing is like it's not easy um, to pay attention to the chat, to keep talking the whole time, to make good picks. Yeah, speak intelligently, is, not just talk. Exactly, say things that people want to listen to. Um, have insight like i don't know how people pull stats like oh that guy is like the fifth yards per route run in the league i'm like you just know that <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah it's kind of wild all right so what's what's coming up at pitcher because i'm very familiar i've 
all my slow drafts have now finished and the whole landscape shifted since I last look at late pitcher on underdog. Yeah, it has a little bit. Um, some names that are becoming relevant. AJ Puck has been becoming relevant because he's been so good in preseason, spring training. Flaherty's there. Really like him. He, uh, yeah, yeah, I, didn't, I shouldn't have said that. Um, <laughs> 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 um, then let's see. Christopher Sanchez. Let's see. Seth Lugo. I actually really like him. I looked at his stats last year and he was like, particularly good um and i think he's gotten knocked as being like a, a long reliever but he's being he's being he's going to be used as an as a full-time pitcher so um like starter so yeah okay so we got a lot of guys and there's a couple of guys that i'm kind of into too that you didn't mention so we have quite a platter mm -hmm. to kind of fill out our last three pitcher spots any other outfielders we're considering at this turn? Um, let's see. Not at this turn. Parker Meadows went, who I like. Um, he's just such a good defender that he's going to play every day in center field. Um, and I think that that has value there. But I think we can wait until our last pick, for, or at least we can push it for one more pick because we know oh, that yeah. he's like seven here. So pitcher should be on the front side. Who do you want to take? Uh, I if I was here alone, I'd probably do Sanchez. Let's do it. I will totally defer to you too with some of these. No, I like it. Uh, it seems like a higher upside, younger guy that really could be boom bust this season. Cool. Now we're gonna go Flaherty here. Um, okay. Talk to me about him. I've not it. clicked him yet. Well, it's just I a pitcher nothing. who's he's not long from. He's not like not that far removed from being like really good, and he's now in a really good pitching market in Detroit. Um, and I mean, there's been reports about increased velocity, which we know velocity is so key to missing bats, and so. It's, it's, it's this kind of pit, it's this profile that seems to fit what we're trying to do here and has been completely undrafted for the majority of this this tournament and has seen mm -hmm. some later ish steam so uh yeah that's that's kind of that's kind of the thing for the I like the that. thesis I think he makes a lot more sense on somebody on this team than like uh, Walker Bueller or N Uncle Nestor or those, those guys up near the top. We're in a part where we can just get the guys that make sense for us, not just who's ever at the top. Yeah, and well, I'm not a, not a Walker Bueller. Um, not at the him going to not start the season essentially uh, full go, then they, they are going to have like a five and a half, six man rotation. And he's going to be one of the guys who's going to be left out because of the wanting him for later in the year for or for the playoffs. The only thing that you could count say the counter to that is he is a, could be a guy you need type of guy late in the year. But if that's the case, I'd rather take Skeens, um, who has no history of, of injury and um, could be right there at the end as well. I think he should be in consideration for our last pitcher. There's a few other you. guys. There's a guy from Tampa Bay that, oh, he, there he goes. Uh, Aaron. Oh, well. That's in there. There's a couple other interesting pitcher names. So we. But not that I've seen. <laughs> we had the one outfielder in our queue. Was there any other outfielders that we want to get? Maybe a group of like three or four of them we kind of like here, and then we can pick at the end. Like Rafaela, um, wasn't expected, wasn't was uncertain about if he was going to be a starter. Definitely looks like to lock down center field. We could rock the Doyle. Um, then do call a little more Colorado. Uh, we could do Nelson Velasquez with big power too. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. I kind of like the top three for this okay. team. 
Okay. How does that, uh, any one of those guys? I mean, actually, we can wait a little bit on talking about. I think I'd probably rank them them in this order. Um, Yeah. I think this is interesting that the skiing said TJ in 2019. It's been a little while, but I am curious about like the, uh, how the statistics look around college pre professional injuries versus and how those have like translated into professional injuries. Um, not anything I can pull data on quickly, but that'd be a cool study. It would be. Uh, one other guy that I was like curious about coming in was Otani. Like, how many guys? Like, how, how does somebody coming back after basically two Tommy Johns? Like, how do they bat? And there's basically nobody that we their stats on that mm-hmm. I, from the people I was talking to. But we're so certain he's gonna be so good and you know top three, top four pick there's like a little bit of injury risk there that maybe the market's not adding in just because he's such a generational talent. Yeah. And it's like the, it, it, we'll, we'll do that. It's moved, he's moved to like the surefire number three overall pick at this point. And the Dodgers are good. What happens if they don't have to have him play every day? Yeah. Like what happens if they can give him a little bit of rest because he's sore? Yeah, if he plays 110 games coming back, like that's not going to go well for you. Yeah, for sure. Um, do you want to go with Keens? Uh, we could, or uh, I know he seems divisive. So if you're into him, you think he's fine, let's do it. Let's do it. We'll start the season in the minors, which is better for this tournament and that's because we don't care if he's in the minors if if he's scoring for us in the first month like we have bigger problems on this team yes and then let's take uh rafael here um, okay. as as our last which i think is this is like it i this blurb right here is super interesting to me just to like get as someone that they're trying to get into the lineup um yeah. so that's really cool but the schemes thing him starting in the minors is better because we don't want him starting at the beginning of the year. Um, we want him pitching at the end of the year when he can be hitting our lineup for a championship. Especially if they do any sort of like an innings limit or things like that. Like they're like if he delays and starts slow and then it comes on flamethrowers at the end of the year, that's fine. Yeah, reasons with the way like reasonably we we just need him to have a half dozen really good starts. Cole Reagans was great last year and was not getting drafted. And he only pitched like a half a season as a starter. Um, so I'm sure a lot of teams would have wanted him to finish out their like drafting season. Uh, they been on their like championship run. And I, just the different texture of the pitchers that we have in our room, I think gives us that luxury of going mm-hmm. with somebody like him. Yeah, for sure. Flaherty, Kikuchi. Um, we got some like very strong major league pitchers on this team. And we still went seven because we didn't really okay, we said Strider, but we're not gonna we're gonna build it as almost if like as as close to it's a hero pitcher, not zero pitcher, hero pitcher. Um but it was a lot of patience and I thought it turned out really well. Uh, I think that you have a strong chance to win this tournament. Strong chance. <laughs> At least there is a chance, right? And I think that that is essential, is just to put, give yourself a chance. Um, some really interesting builds. Now that I'm looking at the, the six, five, eight, eight outfielders with an Acuna team. What is that? Um, let's see if this does this. Is this still going to be bothersome? Yeah. Uh the the dog may need to play fetch. If you if you guys having this problem too, I guess so. Um this I think it appears to be a thing these days. Yeah. Uh, well, this is my 52nd draft. Um out of 60. Have a lot of fun. We'll review it and then we'll get out of here. Um did what I don't normally do with Spencer Strider, had a little bit of patience and waited on Reagan's, got got Reagan's too, and then 
really kind of waited to fill out the pitching staff until later with Bybee Kikuchi, Christopher Sanchez, Jack Flaherty, and Paul Skeens. Um, really like what we're doing here because the volume exists, but the high upside individual starts also exist in here. So this could be a winner or it could be a problem in the playoffs if it's live. Um, from a bats perspective, infield, I think the infield really gets there. Um, Matt Olson, Royce Lewis, Dansby Swanson, Nico Horner, Josh Naylor, and Andres Jimenez. Um, then the outfield, Nolan Jones, Brian Reynolds, Marcelo Zuna, Jackson Churio, Jack Sawinski, Jared Kelnick, and Sedana Rafaela. That's a tough one. I don't know if yeah, I got it right. Um, <laughs> uh, the Boston but, outfielder. That looks yeah. promising. Yeah, the Boston outfielder looks promising. Um, but I think that it checks a lot of the light stacking or some level of stacking as, as well as having the upside. So I really like this. I think it, it panned out really well, especially us doing a build that neither of us does very frequently. Mm -hmm. We did that in a way I'm not sure a whole lot of Strider drafters are doing. And if I'm going and I'm spending that first round price on Strider, I don't want to build the same Strider team as anybody else. And we accomplished that. Yeah, for sure. Can well, we, uh, uh, tr before we go, can we try to look at that 12 hole real quick with the drop down in the top right? Yeah. Let's see what they ended up with. 767. Seven. Um, okay. Let's see. Let's do the let's do the bats first. Um, Freddie Freeman, Bobby Witt, Lindor, Machado, Arenado, Torkelson. I mean, the infield's loaded. Um, Gelovich, Castellanos, Yoshida, Lowe, Melendez, Verdugo, Martinez. Um, feels a little questionable. And then also to not be in a position where the like the pitchers are that strong too. Like I could go like this pitching staff versus our pitching staff, not comparable. And then I think infield wise, I think our infield goes punch for punch with this and outfield wise, this feels weak. At least that's my take. I was just curious how they finished it. And it looks like they probably were trying a build and it wasn't like they ended up with a three, eight, two or whatever the math numbers were got to be like, they, they mm -hmm. clearly had a plan of what they were trying to do, which is always when I see somebody start off a draft with, you know, seven or eight rounds way different than how I would build the team. I always like to like do a pulse check and go back at the end draft and look at them and go, is there something here I'm missing? Is there something mm -hmm. I want to try uh, with one of my bullets? Like what can I learn from these other drafters in the room? So thanks yeah. for uh, looking at that for me. No, I think that's very fair. And that it, it's something that I should do more of because I get in my ways and I keep drafting similar-ish teams with different different players, but the same texture over and over again. And um, I should do a little bit more of like that. And there's one more that I want to kind of take a look at real quick. The top of the board, I think this is interesting. Um, probably not how I'm building it with, getting to eight outfielders. Um, I think this is really interesting because we outfield is probably the weakest at the end of the draft. So, and there's Acuna and Robert and Springer on this team already. So it's like, feels like a lot of this, these picks are redundant, but um, yeah, I just wanted to kind of comment on that. Yeah. But anyways, um, this has been awesome to have you on tonight. Uh, really fun. Really look forward to doing more work with you. And you, see, you should see us on podcasts going forward. So this was really good. Um, can you remind everyone where they can find you? Yeah. So I am in the Spike Week Discord every day uh, giving food takes, uh, NFL takes, and once in a while chatting baseball. It's something I've had just a ton of fun in this draft cycle with baseball and getting back into a sport I really cared about as a kid, but kind of lost it for a decade, decade and a half. Um, 
I am on Twitter. I don't tweet a whole lot. It's usually uh, ads for content that I've written or uh, podcasts that I've done for Spike Week. So if you just do follow Spike Week, uh, you can find all of my best ball work. Yeah, awesome. So yeah, everyone, thank you so much for attending and uh, be on the lookout for the next stream.